you said that you you love uh, touring. What are some of your favorite things that have happened on tour? Oh my god, there's been some crazy things that have happened. I mean, favorite yeah. things. Favorite things to me is like usually crowd size and the excitement level. So that's kind of what I gauge. Like when I think about what are the best shows, I think like okay, the biggest shows with with the least problems, <laughs> you know, or the least things went wrong, or the least things didn't go bad or whatever but um i would say one of my greatest memories was definitely when we played two in a row actually there were two in a row on the on the truth movement tour my last truth movement tour uh which was where we played santa cruz boardwalk one night and we did the i think it was the 25th anniversary of lost boys and oh, so 10 years ago movie. yeah we showed the movie and we it was the one year anniversary uh, of Corey's death and we did a tribute to Corey and it was there at the uh, at the boardwalk and we had like the last number I heard and this was you know fairly recently but I guess they said that we made history we were the most uh, the most people they'd ever had for a concert on the beach and they've done like this giant concert on the beach series for decades now where they've had everybody from like Eddie Money to Moody Blues to you name it. And they said we were the biggest and we got 60,000 people there, which wow. is just insane. Right. So I just remember that being such a perfect day. I was really upset because, you know, uh, Truth Movement is a classic rock band and it's in the vein of Pink Floyd and actually features, you know, some of their artists who work with us in the project. So John Karen and Scott Page, uh, both from Pink Floyd and then Storm Thurgeson did our artwork. So there was a definite direct connection and, and the, 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 the sound, the sound and the style is very similar. So the live shows are very similar, which means there's a lot of lighting. And this was very scary because we do this big production show with all these lasers and lights and videos, and they wanted us to play during the day on the beach. <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, how do you put a, pin in that and then you know still make it live uh so that was a bit daunting of a challenge like what are we going to do none of our stuff's going to work it's not going to you know sell the audience isn't going to get it and instead it was just this raucous reaction throughout the whole show like people just screaming their heads off and having a great time and you know we surprised the audience by doing uh two of the songs from the soundtrack cry little sister and uh people are strange uh as a tribute to Corey. And because uh, that that was actually his favorite song from the movie, Cry Little Sister. He loved that song. And, um, you know, and it was just it was very bittersweet, but it, there was something really magical and beautiful about it. And then right before that show, we had done the Goonies. I think it was 30th anniversary. Or, no, it couldn't have been. It was like maybe it was the 24th and the 25th or something like that. But they were they're only like two years apart. I don't know, 23rd and 25th, something like that. But either way, we did a big Goonies reunion. Uh, in Astoria, Oregon, where it was 5,000 people. And it had, it was supposed to be out on a football field, but they ended up having to move it indoors at the last minute because it got rained out really badly, like they had severe rains. So uh, they ended up, we, we built the stage for that particular show. So it was the biggest budget I ever had for a show because we were able to build the stage to our lighting director's design, which was amazing. He was able to bring in all of his goodies and Unfortunately, uh, he'd been with me for about 15 years, but he was dying of cancer and he wasn't able to be on this tour. So he had written out all the specs for our shows and, you know, kind of drew out the show, you know, all the program, all the design. And then we would show up at the venue and hand it to the staff lighting director and go, here you go. And, you know, those guys don't really take the time to look through your entire 25 page booklet of notes before every move, you know. So sadly, a lot of it didn't get, you know, seen. But what happened was when I told them like, hey, this is one where we get to build the stage, we get to bring in our own lighting trust, we get to do whatever we want. He got really excited. And I was like, is there any way you can be there? And he's like, I'm in hospice care in, I think he was in Denver. And I was like, okay, well, the show's like in a month and it's in Astoria, Oregon. And what if I was able to get you there? <clears throat> and he's like, well, that's impossible. I'm I'm basically on my deathbed. I'm laying here with chemotherapy with my mom who's nursing me, but you know, I've got all these tubes and I have to have all these meds and I, you know, every two hours, it's really, really brutal and awful. And I said, well, I understand, but I know that your dream was to get back into an arena. All you ever, you know, have talked to me about since you've been, because when we, when we met, 
I, Truth Movement was playing literally a club that that sat, I think, 200 people, maybe 175. Like it was a really small, rinky dink little club. And we started, you know, very small and humbly. We, we did it the right way. We built organically by playing all the little dive bars in Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. So we'd started very small. We met him there. And he really impressed me because <clears throat> he was able to take like five par cans and turn it into a Pink Floyd show somehow. Uh, so anyway, I had brought him on. He had been with me all those years, but we never had a real budget because we were building, building, building. And then we finally get to this point where we've got these toys, we've got the budget, we've got all the stuff to do. And I said, you know, now is the chance. This is the time, you know, you've wanted this, our whole friendship. Now I can give you what you wanted. And he was like, you know what? I'll figure it out is if you can get me a nurse, a ride and, you know, accommodations to basically pick me up from my, my, you know, um, uh, hospice care and get me across the country <laughs> to Astoria, Oregon and get me there a few days early so I can get into the venue and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, we'll make it work. And I called a friend of mine who was a nurse who happened to have a van. And he literally drove all the way to Denver from Los Angeles, picked him and his mom up with all of their stuff, all the hospital equipment, all the gear. And they traveled him to Astoria. And when he got there, you know, he basically set up shop and he had this bed that was like a stretcher. And I'm sorry, this is a long story, but it's a really good one. Uh, and he was on this bed that was like a stretcher. And it was like a hospital bed that, that had wheels, like a gurney but it was like a robotic remote control thing where he could like, you know, push the buttons and had a little joystick and he could sit up or he could lay down or he could move or whatever. And he had a little earpiece in and he's sitting there barking orders to all of the crew, you know, just in his glory, just in his heyday, you know, doing what he loves to do. Cause he had come from doing big shows like Pat Benatar and Devo and all these people in the seventies and eighties. And then his career went down, he was doing clubs. So this was like back in his heyday, back where he wanted to be. And it was just a really beautiful experience that we got to share that with him. Plus the fact that we were in Astoria, it was a homecoming for Goonies. And we had Sean Astin, Jeff Cohen, Key, and Richard Donner, and I believe Joey Pants were all there. So it was a kind of a cast reunion. They all came out on stage and sang Goonies with me at the end. And Richard Donner was there. And we had this beautiful moment on my bus backstage uh, before the show where we just, we hung out, we laughed, we had great times together. And he gave me some very profound advice that day, which I've never forgotten. And uh, the whole thing was a magical experience. So those two dates, I would say, were my favorite when it comes to touring. It's the 35th anniversary of uh, Lost Boys. Um, are, you guys, are you guys planning on doing anything for that? I know you mentioned you did something for the 25th. Yes, um, we're not doing it in Santa Cruz this time, though. We're actually doing it as part of the Love Retours tour. Uh, so the name of the new tour is called Love Retours 22 plus a few in 22. And we are, it's a long name, <laughs> but we are- uh, <laughs> The tongue twister. This, right, exactly. So we open in Tempe, Arizona at the Marquee Theater, which I'm really excited about. I love Arizona. Last time we were there, the show got sh uh, cut short because of some of the antics I was describing um you know things that happened somebody started a fire in the audience uh the band before us was cursing and hexing our audience i mean it, there was just this weird crap going on all right um so anyway we we didn't end up coming out and doing the encore and people were very upset about that so uh we're going to be doing they wanted us to do go for it and i have all these people saying we're gonna buy tickets but you better play go for it this time so we're like, okay, we're going to make sure it happens. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, we start off with that show. We're really excited about that one. And then we go directly to Texas. And in Texas, we are doing this thing called the Santa Carla Summer Weekend, which is basically going to be like an entire convention in and around and dedicated to the film Lost Boys in the 35th anniversary. So it's a reunion with uh, Jameson Newlander and I, and then Jason Patrick, and Billy Worth, and uh, I believe G. Tom Mack is going to be opening for us, and we're going to be signing all weekend, doing the, the signings and stuff, and then I'm doing a big concert on Sunday night to uh, kind of end the, the event, and then uh, G. Tom Mack is opening for us at that concert. So 
it should be a, a lot of fun. You're going to get to hear the music from the soundtrack. I'm sure we'll probably, uh, you know, do a cover to ourselves, maybe even the song we did for the third Lost Boys. Who knows? But yeah, it should be a fun event. Anniversaries can be kind of complicated, uh, you <laughs> know, because, well, for I'm sure you, you know as well as anyone, but there's, uh, there's, um, memories of what was going on. You're, you're more aware of the passing of, of time. Do these anniversaries still, does the 35th feel the same as the 25th? No, not at all. We've lost a lot of people. Brooke McCarter is gone. You know, he was, uh, he was a big part of when we would do these reunions generally at the conventions and stuff like that. Brooke was a big part of it. So that was very sad. Um, and of course we lost Richard Donner last year and so nothing's the same you know between Goonies and Lost Boys nothing is the same without him you know he was like a, a surrogate father to me so it's bittersweet man you know it's bittersweet we have our uh, our, our definite um, joy that comes with revisiting the past and and you know giving that to the fans because the fans love it they're going to show the movie I'm sure there'll be a Q&A you know they get to take pictures with the cast so it's nostalgic and it's fun but there is the downside of it that, you know, you miss those people that you lost. And um, as we get older, sadly, we seem to lose more and more.